Welcome back, everyone, to Security Weekly. This is the security news for this week. We've got the regular cast and crew here to talk about the really pressing story for this week. It was interesting. I um, I actually, uh, I've been really busy this week uh, with a lot we of things. We all have. Yeah, everyone's it's... busy, right? But, they, you know, like some weeks you get busy, and especially this time of year, a lot of my free time goes to like Christmas shopping, yep. believe it or not. Right? Like, yep. I mean, uh, yeah. in the I holidays, have, I are... have not ordered a single gift that has not come from Amazon this year. Yes, <laughs> me too. Everybody Dude, I... gift list isn't getting a hack naked. T-shirt. I bought so many presents for myself on the Lightning deals. I mean, I bought some presents for other people, but what I figured out was because I'm a, a nerd, right? I'm like. All the things that they're recommending in their, like, deals are based on my order history in Mm -hmm. Amazon. So what you end up doing is you find some gifts for other people, but a lot of gifts for yourself. Dude, I got awesome. Those that know me, like, I'm a snob with a lot of things. Like, with liquor, beer, coffee, cigars. I'm a snob, right? You like the finer things in life. Dude, I got an awesome deal on a a coffee maker. I got $200 off a coffee maker. That has never, never gone on sale. I uh, but wait, house. Paul, is it a good coffee maker? If you're a snob, oh, it is. Coffee a, maker's got to be awesome. like, dude. This coffee maker yeah. came on the market for like nine hundred dollars. You couldn't get it for below six, and I got it for four hundred dollars. And I, oh, I was okay. like, now, now will, you will, will, will still... it be in the studio? Or no, at it's house? at home. It's at home. Uh, it's at home. I have nice coffee stuff here you in the studio already. Two? I had well, the thing was I had a, a K cup uh, at home. So I never drank coffee at home mm. because I don't like to drink plastic. So <laughs> that's, you know, it's a snob in me. Okay, so now I have the really nice... Are we talking Swiss here, Paul, without mentioning brands? Are we talking Swiss? Uh, it's a, uh, uh, a Krups. Okay. It's the Krups. Oh, no, nah, no. Nah, lost all respect. Oh, wow. Sorry. No, it's a yeah, Krups. Not a K-Cup. But no, it's a, it's a Krups. <laughs> it makes real coffee, dude. It's, it's nah, legit. Nah, nah. So we talk nah, about the same sorry. thing about being a snob, and I really don't even use them that much, but I found this one the other day yeah and they're all custom uh card decks yeah like this one came from uh they came from uh uh boing boing but like looking at some of the stuff it's like look at the box that's really cool and the cards are just yeah they're, they're we get brilliant. we get distracted buying gifts for people in any and, um, case and oh uh, and th- there's also this one that uh mike mike poor ordered and it's got called contraband mm-hmm. i mean Look at the artwork on this. That's really cool. And the cards. Hey, guys. Yes. Guys? Oh, sorry. Oh, We're doing oh, a security oh, yeah. show. Yeah, do security yeah. So <laughs> what I was saying was. Uh, wow. What so is the story of the week? Today, oh. I, got, I was reading up on the uh, creator of Bitcoin. And I never knew that this was like an issue. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm not. Did you did you Sat- follow Sat- Bitcoin Sat- close, more li- closely? Not closely, but enough, enough. So what's the Japanese Satoshi? Satoshi. Yeah. What the full yeah, Sato- you know? Satoshi Nakamura? I think. Yeah. Satoshi Nakamura. Uh, right. Uh, the, the name, all the last name, always for, yeah. goes away. But it's Satoshi. it was like this Japanese, guy, Japanese name, Japanese yep. name, presumably male guy, that created Bitcoin. Now you would presume that whoever created the Bitcoin currency. Like, if I created the Bitcoin currency, I would put some aside for myself. Right. You know, I would and, 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 invest but, in my own project, yeah, so to speak. Now with, now, with Bitcoin, you can't put some aside. You actually have to create perform it. the mathematical operations to, to mine it. Because it's, it's like a file. Right. And, yeah. and, and the, what this would be with uh, a the, digital the, file. The, the, the cryptocurrency is um, pre-mining. So let's say we're going to call create the Security Weekly coin. Yeah. What you do is you create the Security Weekly blockchain. Mm-hmm. And then we mine it for a couple weeks, mm-hmm. and we get the easiest coins out of the way, and we keep those, and then we release it to the general public. Right. So that's essentially what happened with Bitcoin. With Bitcoin. And there was this Satoshi mm-hmm. figure. Nakamura. Yep. Satoshi Nakamura. Yep. That uh, was, no one could unmask the identity of this person. Until and now. It came to, my, it came, it came to my attention this week. And I was somewhat shocked to hear it because it was it was really the the funny part for me when I when we read this all of us read this story uh-huh. was when they released the person the press was saying well it's this unknown. unknown person this generally unknown person no one has ever heard of this person before in their entire lives and this is the person that they believe to have created Bitcoin and they're like it's Craig Wright and Craig S. Wright Larry myself. John and a, a lot of other people Wait. in the community are like, 
hold on, wait, I've had drinks with Craig, right? Like, I know, <laughs> yeah, Craig, I know Craig, right? Craig, what, what do you mean yeah, he's yeah, unknown? Yeah. Like, we know Craig, right? Like, like he's a like, person like, that like we that know. Dude, like, that dude has two PhDs and, like, a dozen master's degrees yeah. and has every it, SAN certification known to man. Super smart. Super smart. Worse than that, his resume says. Wait, resume. No, 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 Joff, his resume, if you read his resume, <laughs> it says the most overqualified security professional on the planet, pretty much overqualified for any job you would ever give him. Dude, uh, Craig, this is Craig a was a very just... interesting, he is yeah. a very interesting individual. Um, I've always known him to be, you know, somewhat eccentric. Mm -hmm. I remember. Eclectic, even. Yeah, eclectic. eclectic. Like, I remember we were in conversations at various conferences, and Craig would be there. And we would, like, make the affiliation. Like, I'm like, oh, you're Craig and you're Paul and, you know, how you doing yeah. kind of thing. And he would uh, participate in our conversations and share drinks. And not – it was a nice guy. Yeah. I always re recognized Craig as a nice guy, always yep. there at certain – Maybe you know, maybe a little weird just because – Yeah, a little yeah. eccentric. Yeah, but but like in, the, in that crowd, it was always this, community. Yeah, yeah, yeah but within the crowd, exactly. it, yeah, the crowd what is, it's not, what is, it's not what outside is the norm. So, he was, yeah. Yeah. so in other words, exactly. he was completely normal. Does he was he wears, exactly. He suit <laughs> no, he was completely normal person in the community. The social anxiety disorder A completely normal Australian genius. Yeah, exactly. You could tell Craig was very smart. You picked up on that right away when you talked to Craig. Like he was really, yep. really smart. And then, you know, knowing that he has two PhDs, it wouldn't surprise you. If you knew Craig, you'd be like, yeah, okay, he had two PhDs. Like, yep. that, that doesn't surprise me uh, kind of thing. How many PhDs did Einstein have? None. None, I would guess. Uh, yeah, but didn't he run over a koala in the yeah, yeah. 1600? <laughs> That's on. what I mean. And we saw that, from one of the articles that – uh, Craig Wright was claiming at one point that he was receiving a higher education degree at the rate of once a, one a month. That doesn't surprise me. He was an academic yeah. type type person. I, I and I got that, that from that's awesome. from from talking with Craig. Wait a minute. I, I got a question though. I might be missing some things. I know I'm late to the party. Why were they going through his house? So, uh, why did the police go to his house? Good question, John. Uh, good question. So, yeah. so great. And it wasn't the police. It was the Australian tax office. And the Australian tax office was going through his house looking for evidence of, I'm not exactly sure what. Um, but Craig Wright has been working with the Australian tax office to redefine how you declare bitcoins as assets. Now, Joff, being uh, an Australian, I, I know you understand a little bit more about this. But my understanding in Australia that your, your assets, as in your tangible assets, are taxed at a different rate than if you were to be sitting on a pile of currency. Uh, that yeah. is correct, as I understand it as well. But uh, bear in mind, I left the country yeah, <laughs> pretty right. early. Well, well, and, and the, and the, and the deal was, was that, that Craig... You're Australian. <laughs> you're the expert. Yeah, so the, we, the deal was that you. my understanding is that the he was working with the Australian tax office to say, look, I have this Bitcoin. It should not be taxed at the higher rate of being a fixed asset. It should be taxed as a currency because it's classified as a digital cryptocurrency. So you should be taxing me on possession of this currency at a significantly lower rate. It's taxing them as if I owned any other kind of – invested in right. any other kind so, of currency. So like, like yeah. here, yeah. if it would be taxing so, me so as if in, bear uh, in mind I invented the... in real estate. Mm -hmm. Versus, I'm sitting on a million dollars in one dollar bills. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Bear in mind that that unlike the United States, the uh, the highest Australian tax bracket I think sits at forty five cents on the dollar right now. The lowest Australian tax rate is nineteen cents on the dollar. So overall, um, if you disclude uh, state and local taxes, uh, the federal tax rates in Australia are higher. Australia is by um, by design, only a, a federal tax but now base. Let's, Everything else is so the Hold on. Let's the short of it is they want to find the guy so they can Let's put this him? in perspective, yeah. Jeff. All right. Th Craig Wright conceivably is walking around. Can you pay his tax bill with Bitcoin? I'm speculating here. I'm speculating, yeah, here. speculating it's here. It's in the article. Okay. I'm speculating. He has a thumb drive in his pocket that is worth, worth roughly... More. One point one Bitcoin. One point one billion Bitcoins. One point one billion Bitcoins, which is what five hundred million dollars. Depending on the di depending on, the on the, he's walking around with five hundred million dollars. Just think about that for a second. When you are walking around with a, a few thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars. 
now, kind of nervous. Yeah. Now, yes, you have, yesterday. <laughs> you have $500 million. In, now, one could speculate that – That's a whole new threat model, right? Hopefully he has a backup of it somewhere yeah. hidden <laughs> in the, on the internet, right, in the cloud somewhere. I would, I would hide that somewhere, right? But it's essentially – it's a money. cloud provider that's been pen tested. Yeah, it's currency, Blackhead. dude, but it's currency. In, in mm -hmm. Guardians. Now, yeah. also keep in mind – the reason I'm concerned for Craig, because I, I know Craig, I've always known him as a nice a nice guy. Um, if you are an internet uh, a criminal that deals in Bitcoin, some kind of dare I say everybody drink cyber criminal. If you're a cyber criminal cyber. Uh, or a criminal of any kind, you may have an investment in Bitcoin. Let's say you have ten to fifty million dollars in Bitcoin. Craig sells his Bitcoin. Presumably, if he is the person that created it, and presumably, if he does have the equivalent of 500 million U.S. dollars in Bitcoin, if he sells it, that could negatively affect the value of Bitcoin. Yep. It means if I'm a Mexican drug lord with 50 million dollars, you just cost me 40 million dollars. That puts a target oh. on you probably larger than any other target out there, right? Because if you die before you cash in your 500 million, you just save me $40 million. So the uh, incentive for criminals to go after Craig is pretty high. So you can't convey Bitcoin in a last will and testament to your survivors? Or to ah, it's a good question. So, but it's uh, a whole now, now here's, here's the whole thing about this, this uncovering of some of this stuff. There was another gentleman involved, allegedly, in the creation of Bitcoin, uh, Dan Kleinman. Yep. Uh, and I, it's Kleinman, Kleinman, and I can't remember the, the exact pronunciation. Uh, David, I'm sorry, uh, Dave, uh, who passed away in 2013. And there was a trust that was created between Dave and Satoshi mm -hmm. and Use the uh, alias. Craig. Yeah. Uh, allegedly between the three of them or something of the, this variety in which this 1.1 billion bitcoins were held in trust. And um, that they would not be released from the trust until 2020. I, these things were locked up and the security of the Bitcoin market was held until 2020. Mm -hmm. Unless one of the parties was to expire. Which David di did. 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 Expired Dave in 2013. Did in 2013 yeah. And then 15 months after the death of one of the parties, the Bitcoin would revert to Craig after wow. 15 months. <clears throat> I, uh, I So... So yeah, like I said, late to the party on this. Uh, like Paul, I know I know Craig, and uh, I've known him for a long time. And a couple of things about Craig: one, um, you know, as Paul said, he's an extremely nice guy. The dude likes to talk about himself, and he likes to talk yes. about what he does. He likes to it. talk, and he likes to talk about himself, John. But, yes. but I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, he he can back it up. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, he's know, very the, smart. The dude very has smart. chops. Yeah, the dude has chops. Um, the other thing I, I would, you know, the last thing I would say on this is, I know that Craig listens to the show. He listens to it very regularly, and, uh, and I would just say, Craig, take care of yourself. You're kissing because he's worth five hundred million dollars. No. no, 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 no. Dude, if he was an no. asshole, I'd come out and say that he was an asshole. Believe he's me, he's never I been agree. an asshole to me. Oh no, yeah, absolutely. never been an asshole to me. I, and you know Super what? Nice he guy. may have done some hideous, heinous things. He might not. I don't know. He he, he deserves whatever's coming to him. But I would just say, you know, take care of yourself. Yep. And, uh, and quite, honest, and quite honestly, I've seen I've seen the comment made, and I will reiterate this: if Craig and or including uh, Dave created Bitcoin and either one or both or whichever are Satoshi, dude, dude you, you deserve the 1.1 million billion Bitcoins. Oh, yeah. Well, they, they talked about uh, releasing a paper on a currency, yeah. uh, a crypto currency. Sato crypto uh, Satoshi released the paper. Released the paper, but there was ties to that paper to Craig and, and David. Yep. But it, and it's a it's a difficult problem to solve. And and one of the things that I think Craig was known to be very passionate about was creating that anonymous cryptocurrency. Right? He yep. had a lot of like strong feelings Maybe, about uh, that, which was yep. like further the article <clears throat> kind of points that was like further ties that <laughs> yep. he is Satoshi kind of thing, which is purely speculative. I mean, if you it, read it, the it Wired is. article, you kind of go back and forth. It's like circ it's circumstantial evidence at best. The Wired article in typical Wired fashion, right? Because I have issues with the way Wired does journalism. Let's yep. just throw that out there. But they presented oh, yeah. like all this evidence about that directly links Craig to uh, being the Satoshi. creator of Bitcoin yep. and being Satoshi. 
Then they present a whole bunch of evidence about how he may not be, and this could be an elaborate hoax that he's trying to claim credit for it. And you can take away a lot of things from that. Mm. One, the way that Wired does journalism is, yep. uh, I think, on the table uh, it, to me is being uh, reputable or not, I think, anyway. Uh, but the other thing, too, is, like, why why would he do that, right? Like, why, why well, would and Craig... And I could see... I could totally just knowing Craig for a long time. I could totally see Craig doing that. Like you remember, for a while we were all walking around saying, "I am net dev." Yeah, we yeah. even had shirts and hats made for God's yeah. sakes. Yeah, I still, um, I, I still have totally a shirt that uh, I still have a hat that says, "I am not the, I am not the real net dev." Right. Yeah. I, I don't so, think I've uh, met um, Craig. We call him Craig in Australia, right? I mean, but I don't think I've met him. Hmm. I thought you guys all knew. Wow. Each <laughs> but but it, you know what? To be honest, if he did make a joke like that, like just saying, "Hey, uh, I'm 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 Satoshi," I could totally see someone from Wired being like, "Oh my God, this guy has multiple doctorates and a whole bunch of computer security degrees. It fits." <laughs> and, yeah. the story, yeah. and basically destroying this dude's life. Yeah. No, no I mean there's uh, the Wired article, and I haven't read the. Uh, it was it Gizmodo. Gizmodo. Yep. Wired and, and Gizmodo did their own investigative journalism and i haven't read gizmodo's I'm article assuming i read, that was in air quotes paul yeah i i read uh the wired one and they do present some pretty strong evidence that links craig to being satoshi absolutely yeah the evidence is pretty strong in my opinion from whatever i mean every can read it like anyone else can right i'm just i don't have any inside information it's not a secret that Craig was part of the Sands community, mm -hmm. and we're all sitting here saying, yes, we knew Craig largely because of his involvement in the Sands community, and we're all sitting here saying that his contributions to the Sands community were extremely positive, mm -hmm. and we don't have anything bad to say about the guy. So, uh, you know, take from that no. what you will. We're telling you what we know. We're telling you fact. We're not... Uh, speculating. Uh, you can go uh, read all the it, articles you and know, draw it, your own conclusions. If you, if you think about it, I, I was thinking about this last night, and I'm thinking... You know, it it really doesn't matter who created Bitcoin. If it's Craig, then then great. But you know what? Wh whoever it was, it's going to change the world. Mm. I mean, well, yeah. in the the but the negative press that comes from this from mm. Craig, the the speculation right now is that the worst crime he's committed is essentially tax evasion. <laughs> tax evasion. Tax evasion. That's what that's what took down uh, Al Capone. It is. What took, I mean, Al Capone yeah, committed hell, more hated, way more heinous crimes than tax evasion. Right, right. But, but hold on, I got a question about that. Okay, let's talk about the legalities of that for a couple of seconds. The dude creates something. What was the value of it when he created Bitcoin? Zero. Zip. Zero. Zero. Zip. Zilch. And then, <sighs> like a few years ago, it was through the freaking roof. Yeah, you know why? Crashed and it came up. So how the hell do they calculate yeah. how much he owes in taxes? Yeah. So you, whenever he whenever he created an imaginary currency, it's like me creating something like Monopoly money and saying, "Yes, I'm a billionaire of Monopoly money." And then all of a sudden, the IRS showing up and they're like, "Exactly, how much Monopoly money do you?" Yeah, we get a third of that. Yeah. yeah so we, oh, John, right. John, that, that may be considered that Bitcoin. may be considered yeah. uh, capital gains. It could yeah, be. Yeah. Well, that might, be, but in that, that case, might be he, where, he hasn't cashed that, them out yet. Well, but that might it's be true. where the ATO is going after him. But you know, here's here's the thing too. A um, couple of things I want to point out with my Australian knowledge is, uh, first, the Australian Tax Office uh, historically I don't think is anywhere near as uh, aggressive as our, our lovely IRS in the states. Now, wait, um, does the and, Australian Tax Office do they carry firearms? Uh, I. They don't do know actually. The if you go to the to picture, uh, the twit pick. No, yeah. they uh, carry the, knives. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they yeah. got. Call that they a got knife. This uh, is a knife. IRS agents <laughs> okay. in the U.S. No, no, wait, are wait, wait. armed. Yes. That, the second thing I want to Carry repeat, firearms. which is which might be to my detriment, <laughs> there has been an urban myth in Australia for a long time, and uh, I might be misstating this, or it could be some story my dad told me when I was young, but of a, a gentleman in Australia who uh, never paid his taxes and used to send him a bottle of champagne every year, and they never caught him. So, um, you know, I, I, I don't know that. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know what the legalities are and what the maybe ATO picture is just sent the ATO a bottle of champagne. Yeah, <laughs> just sent him a bottle of champagne every year, and he would have been good, and we never would have had yeah, this. Exactly. I think it was just he might have mishandled the uh, the um, uh, what am I what am I looking for here? The 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 social etiquette of the situation. <laughs> it, it's it's a fascinating story. Um, 
more so for us because we know the person involved um, or potentially involved. What we think is allegedly the person involved. allegedly involved. Thank you, Jeff. You know what? Shit. Why don't I, Why don't we just shoot him an email and try to get him on the show? Why don't you get him on the show? <laughs> that would be fantastic. He could reveal right here on Security Weekly. Yeah. I, and you know what? I, I, thought, I thought about that. but He's um, never been on the show, which, I mean, he very well could have been on the show. And, and it wasn't like we set out to not have him on the show. We very well could have had him on the show. We just we hadn't. Yep. Now, now the thing is that I, I suspect now for you to do that, we'd probably have – a very difficult time yeah, getting I'm a hold sure, of him. Sure, I'm sure. Um, he's I don't del- know. You he, might be surprised. He's deleted his Twitter account. That's it, then. Yep. No, seriously. I mean, oh, I think we're going to have a hard he's time. He's out of touch now. My God, no tweeters. <laughs> well, it's- I think he. I think he wants to be uh, at this point. If this is the case with these two articles, he wants to be left the hell alone. I'd love to have him on the show and talk about just. So if no, you're nothing, listening, yeah, I, I'd, if you're I'd, listening, I'd, Craig, I'd love to have him on the show and talk. Hey, about we would have loved to have Satoshi. the person that that created Bitcoin on the show. We would have totally who, done that. The problem is, before we didn't know who that was. Now it's speculative that Craig yep. is that person and yep. it's someone we know. And you know what? I think we'd love to have Craig on the show, even if we didn't mention a word about Satoshi. Yeah, that's It'd right. It'd be impossible Craig, to do that. But <laughs> I think, I think we do. Or send John or Paul an email if you know their email addresses, because I'm pretty sure you don't know mine. And, uh, yeah, let's have you on the show. That would be great. Well, I will conclude this discussion with I hope Craig is safe because, yeah. like I said, it's someone we know and respect uh, in the community thus far based on what, what we know up to this point. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if it was him, and I wouldn't be surprised if he had help from Dave. And Yeah, um, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Uh, and he fits the profile as someone being smart enough to absolutely. to do this, and, it, it, yep. and, yeah, and the two of them together to put it together. And yeah. you know what? I, I think that's great. Now, the one the one thing that really concerns me, uh, and there's been today the uh, the stuff that came out was that um, uh, Craig Wright was getting doxxed about being Satoshi, that someone was leaking to the media. Someone did leak to the media. Someone in leaked. the Wired article, yeah. they said they had leaked documents. Someone leaked to the media, and the question... Yeah, but they were saying is, well, did he leak it himself? That, that's yes. the question today. Yes. Did he leak it himself? And I would argue that, you know, John, based on his resume that you've said, that he said, uh, you know, I'm overqualified for any position you give to me. If he was that good of a security guy, how did he get hacked? Yeah, I, that, that, that said, we've preached to everyone yeah, that know, don't expect that. Don't ask when you're going to get hacked. Assume that you already are. We talk and, about yeah, the yeah, show. I mean, yeah. we're not we're not saying it's, it would be impossible for no, Craig to get hacked. Definitely but not. We're saying that if Craig, with all of his knowledge, were to put effort into OPSEC, it would be really hard. hard. Yep. Now that said, now that said, right, right. I, I think if that's he, the he case, if Craig if Craig was doing Bitcoin, he was probably. And racking up uh, higher education degrees at the rate yeah. of one a month, he was probably significantly diversified mm-hmm. and not focusing well, on security. Well, that's that's the other thing, it, 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 you know, whatever comes from this, is I'm going through some of my emails. The dude's written zero days. we got papers that he's written. Uh, he's done a lot more than just Bitcoin. Yeah, yes. uh, absolutely. There's a lot of stuff in this guy's repertoire. Well, we knew and Craig, to be honest, before we knew he had any affiliation with Bitcoin, we knew Craig for all of his other accomplishments. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And and I think that that's also interesting. And that might be one of those things that might piss him off is that, you know, he was associated with Bitcoin a long ass time ago. He has done a whole bunch of things and his whole entire life is now being reduced to this one thing. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That would kind of suck if you're somebody like Craig. All of your research, everything else you've done is overshadowed. Yeah, and, that. and that was some of the things that they from the leak stuff that they were saying that, hey, uh, you know, Craig or, or Craig allegedly said that uh, Satoshi has gotten all of this press about this one paper about quote Bitcoin that he wrote, which has gotten way more press than anything that, um, that he's done. That he's and done. It, yeah. and you know what? Quite honestly, I've read all of Craig's papers since mm-hmm. related. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know what? I couldn't even begin to tell you what the paper that Satoshi read about. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah, it's, it's it, it will take it, take that at face value. So there's um, an extreme to that. A yeah. couple of other interesting stories uh, this yeah. week. I need to get going, guys. I'll talk to you all later. Take care, John. Thank you very much. Bye, John. Bye. Have a good Bye. night, John. Bye, John.
uh, toys being used as spying devices. Yeah. That was a really underwhelming article that I linked to in the show notes. I, just didn't, I didn't see this one, but it looked up We talked s- about it briefly with Ed, and yep. we talked about it previously. Yep. But it's getting a lot of press lately. Yep. And, and, toys. and to that, to that the, uh, the VTech breach, yes. um, it turns out that they got passwords. They grabbed all of the password hashes, mm-hmm. and uh, that it was claimed that, oh my god, VTech is not storing passwords in a secure method. Yeah, they, they're MD5 hashing all of their passwords. Which agreed is not a very secure method. <laughs> ah, no. <laughs> but it wasn't like they were playing text. There was another site that uh, leaked uh, children's information that were registering for an online service as well. Uh, uh, the child I don't online, know if this necessarily uh, speaks. Chi- the, the violation of the Child Online Protection Act, COPA. Yeah, I mean, it, I don't know if it speaks to a trend, but certainly as technology creeps into things like toys as it creeps into things like coffee makers or whatever mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and all these internet of things it's conceivable that there's going to be security issues and now they come to the forefront because yep. people who yep. did bad things before without technology are now using technology to do them and now mm-hmm. you can do things like yep. spy on kids jo- and things like that yeah josh had a great well, it's also this this um Go amazing ahead, accumulation of baggage right um uh, the um i mean just think about how many old searches you do um, once in a while about yourself and you find an article from, you know, 1995 or something. Um, imagine what it's going to be like for our kids. Yeah. Uh, you know, in, in like, uh, 2030, you know, the accumulation of internet baggage essentially is going to be horrendous. Yep. Um, exactly. The, the, exactly. You know, what's out there. Yeah. And that these yeah. internet of toy things become really interesting. I, I spoke at our local ISACA chapter today mm-hmm. and I followed up Josh and Josh did his, you know, how I ruled the word, I mean, world, I, saw, iOS game hacking. I haven't seen his talk, Which but I read the description, and I really wanted to have him on the show to talk uh, about it's, it. It's awesome. It's awesome. He talks about We've three been different... so close to having Josh on the show. He's really yeah. busy lately. He, yeah. he's uh, He talks about three different methods in which he does iOS game hacking, and one of the things is that he talks a little bit about the Internet of Toys mm-hmm. type of thing in that there's now, with our kids, there's becoming a very distinct line between, shit, I'm too old for a rattle, but I'm not quite old enough for an iPad. Yep. What's the in between? It's like Hello Barbie. Mm-hmm. That I've got that internet sort of connected device that talks to me and guides me. And mm-hmm. to to me, it's it's very much uh, Neil Stevenson Diamond Age. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Like I haven't read that yet. Oh, go. Do you should oh, like, way, read that now. Like it is so yeah, put you don't, now. Is it probably is it old? It's probably old. No, right? it's I'm not, behind the curve. No, I'm not it's really, not. I love Neil Stevenson, old. but it's not that old. He's, Neil Stevenson um, writes some awesome stuff. Yeah. What was I'm his really uh, breakout thing with the uh, um, pizza delivery guy? It, uh, right? cre- so he did Cryptonomicon. Cryptonomicon as well Snow as Crash. Snow Crash. Snow Crash was the one Snow I'm thinking of. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Very talented author. Yep. Someone well, said this well feedback lately. They said that we should create a list of sci-fi technology-related books that we've read. Because over the years, we've recommended... Ooh, we could have a Security Weekly book club. That would be fun. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> we could. You know, we totally that's, could. that's you know, not, it's not a, bad a bad idea. idea. <laughs> uh, it's totally true, though. All right. You heard it here live on Security Weekly. From no, Joff. No, Joff, I know you were club. poking around in my story about a DDoS attack on the root name servers. I haven't been able to All dig right. into this one uh, very deeply. Um, I don't know if you know any more than I do. I, I really don't, but but it, it's a it's kind of a fruitless attempt. I don't know whether it, it got any traction um, because not 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 a lot of people know that while there are only. 13 named addresses that come back in a root name server query because of the 512 bytes mm-hmm. limitation of the UDP packet. Yeah. Um, root name servers are actually um, uh, massive anycast routes in the net. So you might be thinking that you're talking to a single address in one location, but in fact, there may be hundreds and hundreds of different name servers. Uh, that are being hosted in different parts of the world due to uh, um, just routing tricks in the internet. So the um, the idea that a uh, root name server attack could actually take down the structure of the internet um, is is a little bit fanciful, to be honest, um, due to the um, robustness of, of the infrastructure. Mm. Now, having said that, somebody's probably going to come back and say, actually, it did actually uh, have an impact. And yeah, it might have slowed things down a little bit, but... 
Um, the oh, thing is, is that why my YouTube wouldn't load? Robust. Go ahead. Is that my why my YouTube wouldn't load the other day? Could be. Yeah. Is that my lube tube? My lube tube. <laughs> yeah, yeah tube my lube tube. <laughs> it's I, probably <laughs> because you had loft on you know on the Security true. Weekly talking yeah. about how fragile the, the internet, internet is. really is. Could be. Well, according to some to presidential <laughs> according to some presidential candidates, we should just close the internet. Right. Right. And then Jeff Moss finds the internet on off button on an airplane. I mean, he found where they've been hiding it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, there is yeah. some other stories there that talk. Um, I was looking at um, uh, the hacker news that that speak to the FBI's opinion on uh, uh, getting rid of encryption, essentially, which um, just offends the hell out of me. But um, look, I, yeah. I find it interesting and somewhat scary that uh, others haven't learned what I think a lot of us have learned a long time ago is that you just can't say no. That we have to function as a society. We have to function with technology and be secure at the same time. And I'm not saying that's easy, but saying things like, let's close the internet, let's not use encryption, uh, that's not, not all not good things. Mm -hmm. all not good it's things. not feasible. I mean, strong, strong encryption is... In incredibly valuable for securing commercial transactions and absolutely 100 percent necessary so it's it's uh, you know note to everybody out there it's used for good things you know uh it's not just used for bad things and like anything there's there's two sides to a story but how do you how do you distinguish between the two and, and is there a way to well that's our job promote, right if we're doing our jobs as security professionals we should be able to guide people on how to do that the yeah. good or the bad? Both. Both. Okay. It's important to point out the bad. I mean, that's what yep. a lot of us do. Some of us do for a living. This is what I used to do, right? It's penetration testing. You're, mm -hmm. you're, you're pointing out the bad, right? Um, a lot more. Well, what I, you I, and I, I do, would, Jeff, right? Are <laughs> telling people what, what to do for the good and how, and, right. how to, and how to protect it. Right. right. Uh, and it's important to understand both and come up with a balance and that uh, and that's not easy believe me no. i want a well, his, his, i want a refrigerator that can tell me things that can be smart and intelligent but i want it to be secure Secured at the same, same time. time and that's and not cost a billion dollars yes. because of all the investment yes. that went into yes. it and the chipsets it, it, that's so a great right. point larry yep. yep yeah here's the other thing for people to keep in mind and 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 law enforcement have got to be thinking about this as well for this concept of end-to-end -end encryption is a little bit of a myth, right? For for anything that is encrypted, there is a point in time in that transaction where the data is not encrypted. You know, right. look at the endpoints. Preach it. Jeff. You know, there, there it. is a place where it goes into the pipe before it gets transmitted over the wire, and that place represents a point in time where the data is not encrypted. And so this is not, you know, this it's a bit of a. Um, I don't even know the word for it. I it's mean, a non sequitur. It's... Yes, thank but you. But there's, there's a lot of political things happening now, and I'm, I'm trying not to delve us too much into politics, right? But there's a lot of political things now that we want to be free, mm -hmm. right? But we want to be secure as well. And I think it's interesting that we're talking a lot about this in general mainstream you know, politics, well, but it's an issue we've gonna, been dealing with in security. Get into I want to let people go on the internet and do whatever they need to do on the internet and, and do their jobs and be creative and use the internet to their advantage as a tool, but I want us to be secure at the same time. Yep. But the concept of freedom, you know, to, to go to Joff's uh, mm -hmm. story about did the founders ever imagine where we would be today? Mm -hmm. The concept of freedom is built into the founding documents of, the, of this country but is security built into the founding documents? I mean, is that well, something uh, that I even suppose, I, suppo to I suppose it all depends on how you define security. I may define security as the right to, to, to bear arms, but that might be a different story altogether. But I well, mean, one of the things, back in the days of the, things, of the founding fathers, sorry, Jeff, back in the days of the founding ahead, fathers, there was a, I, I forget who said it, but this was a, this was a, a slogan that was the, within the, the Hallowed halls of NSA when I was there, gentlemen. Oh, well, it was back in the days of the founding fathers when you were there. When I was there. hearing the talk. Yeah. 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 Gentlemen, do not. Jack's not, not read. here, so we have to impart that on you, Jeff. Fine, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take the mantle. <laughs> gentlemen, do not read other gentlemen's mail. It mm -hmm. Is an old statement yeah. that yeah. goes yeah. back to the revolutionary times. Mm -hmm. So the idea of encryption and protecting communications. You know, I mean, it goes back thousands of years, but in this country, it goes back to revolutionary times. 
and the idea that you would even open up some of these other messages. Yep. You that you, we, I, I think about this and how I deal with my relationship with my wife. My wife has friends that I'm not friends with, that she's friends with on Facebook, and she text messages folks, and she sends emails, and you know what? I don't know what they are. And quite honestly, I don't need to. Because if yeah. there's some yeah, illicit you conversation, have young children, well, are, uh, what are you going to do with there, them if and there, technology? If, if and there is illicit conversation that is happening between my wife and another party, guess what? That means I wasn't a good husband, and that there's a reason for her to go do that. I, well, in my opinion, yeah, uh, and, and, that and, up, and that's okay, and that's my per that's my personal opinion. Well, on that, I also on that think that brings up issues uh, of privacy trust. And, and trust right, as well. Exactly. And not to say exactly. that that's an issue, but that's a. The kids, uh, different the kids, aspect uh, the of kids it. on the other hand, uh, we're taking maybe a little bit of approach. We're not restricting what the kids can see on the internet currently. Why? Good for Be you. Because we have chosen to have a conversation about what is appropriate and what isn't. Yeah, I take and the same approach with, with my kids too. I don't yeah. restrict. I don't do any restriction yep. yet. She, now my oldest is seven, so I yep. haven't. Cor Corinne spends yeah, half of her day. Yet. I'm not there yet. <laughs> I'm not there. Corinne yet. spends I half of her day on yet. YouTube. And wait, she, can wait I give you guys a glimpse of the come, future? Wait till your kids are teenagers and they say to you, I want to do whatever. Don't you trust me? Yep. Mm. So and and that, you know, as a as a parent so of older did, children uh, that yeah. have been through it, yeah. that's that's always a red flag that, oh, they're up to no good. Right. And yep. if yeah. they say, I, Don't you trust me? Oh, I need to start thinking about and looking into what you're doing. Because mm -hmm. I know so, you're up to so, no good. So, so just to give you a glimpse of the future from my perspective too, I, I did that with my kids, uh, and my oldest is now twenty. Um, and when I said I did that with my kids, I, I took the same approach as you guys took. I, I said, look, um, there are bad things out there, but I am not going to restrict it technologically in any particular way. Um, have fun. If anything concerns you, come talk to me. Um, and you know, we we took that approach, and it's worked very well. But we did have to have several in-depth discussions along the way yep. um yep. certainly in the teen years so, uh when so, they discovered some more interesting facets yep. so we uh, uh, Cor corinne had yep. her first ukulele lesson mm -hmm. last night and uh, the instructor asked her great you now know four chords we can start putting songs together. You can, be you a can rock play star. rock. Yeah. I, and I <laughs> said, she, knows, she knows one. I, so I was sitting there so I can learn a little bit to help her practice. And I said, uh, she knows one more chord than the Beatles did. Type of thing. He's like, he, you're <laughs> right. Have you ever and, seen the YouTube video where there's the band that says, with any yeah, three yes. or four chords, yeah. you can play any, 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 number, songs, one, yeah. any number one so, song that's ever been in existence? And in fact, yeah. it's all the it's same true. song. Yeah. So I, sh I said, she said, he said to Corinne, uh, so what song do you want to learn? And she went and got her iPad and brought mm -hmm. out some videos and I said I want her to learn I'd love her to learn this and I said Corinne this has some bad words in it I do not want you to repeat anything you hear here mm -hmm. and this is the song oh damn it just go the, go the fuck to sleep <laughs> <laughs> I got it I got gnome. it gnome gnome <laughs> Ain't shit but hoes and tricks. They call me Jones and suck the dick. Get the fuck out after you're done. And hop into my ride and make a quick run. Bitches ain't shit. And it's done on the ukulele. Yeah, it's really funny to hear the hardcore rap on the ukulele. Yeah. But even better, it's sung by this dude in this weird pink suit. <laughs> oh, that's all. You could have sent me that video. I wanted to watch that. Wow, that's thing. a classic. <laughs> wow. Done by this dude in a weird pink suit at the park. <laughs> okay, okay, I I got to get one more statement in, Paul. And, so uh, there is some topic. Su such a thing as censorship just, as parents. Yes, I, I will yeah. say that. J just just a reminder: the EFF, uh, who we we love and support. I I love the EFF. I think the other guys in the in the, in the podcast do as well. Yes. Um. Just uh. Just released their uh, Let's Encrypt uh, uh initiative, where they're uh, becoming a uh, public uh, certifying authority. So, uh, for free, certificates for free. Awesome. So free. Um. So and the timing couldn't be better, in my opinion. Yep. Let's encrypt. Let's encrypt. Let's encrypt. Let's encrypt. Let's encrypt. So, as as an NSA trained cryptanalyst, uh, and Joff, you were kind of touching on it. You know, there is some point where the 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 data is in clear text. So, you know, all this talk about encryption, 
don't assume that you're safe just because you're encrypting because sooner or later yes, sure. somebody's got to read the message got to read the data you know, whether it's on your end on the other end and of course you can't control the other end well let's be specific your browser software is performing the encryption mm -hmm. when it talks to an encrypted web page uh, via, via its own implementation uh, or probably one of the open source implementations of uh, TLS encryption. The server software at the other end that you are talking to is performing a decryption on the other end. That data on both ends is in clear text form. Yep. And, and you know, Yep, that encryption only goes so, so far. It's in transit, not necessarily in processing or in storage. So full disclosure, exactly. in the world of cryptanalysis uh, throughout the annals of history, <laughs> annals. it's too bad we don't have annals. Ed around Annals anymore. of history. Annals. <laughs> the annals, annals, annals of history. history huh? uh, Sounds like a bad know, porno. There's relatively few uh, actual cryptanalytic attacks against algorithms and crypto systems uh, usually it's finding shortcuts like looking at both ends or you know finding some way to trick people into uh, not doing a, not following the steps or not following the steps in a particular order or taking advantage of well it, I can do it this way and get my message through and bypass a whole bunch of stuff so uh, you know encryption is not the be all end all solution that's right. That's or taking line. advantage of the key exchange algorithm, for example. Symmetric encryption requires exchanging a key. If the key exchange algorithm is compromised and you have the key, you can decrypt. Well, you know, it's funny. Can I digress a minute? A minute. You have a, a minute. minute. I've got exactly a minute. a minute. So I, I'm on an alumni mailing list with a bunch of uh, retired NSA people, ex-NSA people, and we've been talking for the last week or two about – uh, recording uh, a, a historical documentation of all the things that have happened in InfoSec and, in, and all the stuff we've been involved with in the last 20, 30 years. And, uh, you know, there's been some little in interesting heated arguments about what's important and what's not. Uh, but the idea of, yeah, I started my NSA career in the manual crypto system shop with one-time pads. One-time pads are not breakable if they're used correctly, if you can't mm. steal them. There is no way to break a one-time pad because it's using a, a random key one time. There, there's just no way to break it. It's, it's computationally impossible. Now, uh, in today's world, we do key management. We generate keys. We, we use algorithms and and mathematics and take advantage of the of the technology and computers that you know produce you know millions and billions and of computations a second uh, but it's all machine generated and therefore it's all theoretically breakable even if even because if for no other reason brute force there's only x number of combinations and uh, you know that's different from a one-time pad of course a one-time pad isn't scalable for securing uh, website traffic mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So we've come up with uh, ways of encrypting tra tra traffic that over time uh, they, they have fallen to attack. They, you know, they've become cryptographically solvable even if it's by brute force. Uh, you know, I was at a, I was at a Hall of Fame, crypto, crypto security Hall of Fame dinner a month or so ago and uh, you know the the RSA guys, you know they're all members of the Hall of Fame, but RSA is pretty much out the out the window now because it's breakable. Mm. Uh, so are they still pioneers? Should they still be in the Hall of Fame? Because they came up with an algorithm that at the time for the computational power was okay. Now, not okay. But that, uh, we my assertion is yes. They uh, yeah, still be I, I, when Brian, I say yes. To when, yeah, I say yes. When Brian Snow. Uh, was on the show. Mm -hmm. He talked about the lifetime of a crypto algorithm. So uh, there is a certain lifetime. I happened to work with Brian Snow. It, we had him on the show. It was one of our most prolific that's, yeah, that's really episodes. Cool. Yeah, uh, in fact, he said something to me that I, there's been a life lesson. Um, and, and I don't even know if he remembers saying it or if he's repeated it. But he said very early on in my career, uh, when I was first starting out, he said, because he was the chief scientist in the yep. group that I was working for, he said, what can be created by man can be broken by man. And that's proved to be true. Mm -hmm. 
Brian's someone we need to have back on the show. We should have him back. We should have him back when you're on the show, around. too, because yeah. you have a history with, with yep. Brian. That's yep. great. That's great. Uh, any other stories really quick? Could we bring up my story real quick? Yes, please do. So, you know, again, into the PCI world, there was a, a court ruling or a, 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 a Federal Trade Commission ruling on a, a breach case with mm -hmm. Wyndham Hotels. And what's and you know when a when a when a merchant is breached, FTC gets involved. Like I, w I was the QSA for the TJX companies for many years. TJ Maxx, Home Goods, they were breached in the mid 2000s, yep. and they're under this 20-year uh, scrutiny of FTC. But FTC in their ruling today, they cited PCI as a standard that needs to be followed. And why this is as significant or why people think it's so significant is the federal government is citing the PCI standard as something that should be followed by merchants, where in the past, most merchants and companies have said, well, it's kind of a voluntary thing, it's a contractual right. thing. If, yeah, if, you, wanna, if regular, you wanna continue processing a, cards with us, you need to do this. Right, mm. and, and you know, so PCI, we could have a whole show on that sometime, but you or know, this is significant because the <laughs> FTC, <laughs> or not, FTC cited this, this voluntary now. standard is something that should be followed. <laughs> right, and so they're, they're, you know, the, the, the belief now is that, okay, this is, this is opening the door, this is precedent uh, I, setting to the, the federal regulations coming in and maybe not issuing a regulation, but saying no, from a federal perspective, you need to follow this standard. I, I'm actually really impressed with the latest version of PC, the PCI standard. Uh, I, PCI I was free? about to say, I was gonna double down on that respect, uh, uh, statement there larry because the latest version has, has got some intelligent work in it and um if it's getting traction um i think it'll do us good in the industry i don't know sorry i interrupted you though larry. no it's okay no, I, you say the same thing that that well ab ab absolutely i think it's the pci version 3 uh, is a leaps and bounds of what it used to be when we started making fun of it it's still not it, it's a still bare minimum but it is a pretty I, I still want to make minimum. fun of it. <laughs> well, you can make fun of it. You can call it a bare minimum. But any company that I've ever worked with has struggled to even meet the bare minimum. Yeah, yeah that's the, true. Any that's company true. that's tried to do it and tried to do it right absolutely struggles with it. So I always ask the question, if it's the bare minimum, why is it so hard to follow? And where does that leave any company that's trying to be secure? Yeah, good point. Uh, that's a very good point. Yeah. Um, Version three. And, and we, oh, go ahead, Jeff. Oh, I was going to say we we sit. You know, often us in the security industry um, sit back and we you know we kind of throw darts uh, at the uh, operational side of the house um, to some extent. We don't do it. A lot of us don't do it intentionally, but it does have that inadvertent effect. But I know that I have worked in the past in very large operations, and when you get to large operations and doing things at scale. Uh, achieving a, a decent level of compliance and security, yes, I said the compliance word, is not easy. It really is not easy. And it's not so much about the tasks you need to perform. It's about the the multiplicity of that. It's about the the level of scale that you have and the, and the dynamic nature of the environment and having to repeat that process at scale over and over again. No, that's very true, because I've had many companies over the years that approached PCI as a project. Oh, it's time for our annual audit. You know, let's get all our ducks in a row. Half of the PCI is, do you have documented policies, procedures? Do you have everything that you do written down? And it's all supposed to be reviewed annually and updated. And I used to chuckle to myself, because I'd go to, into a company and all of their you know, 40, 50 documents of X number of pages had all been reviewed magically the week before I got there. Yeah. <laughs> so I knew, yeah. and, and they were all <laughs> they, were, they were all endorsed or, or you know signed off by the same person. It was all within a matter of days. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, you've done a really good job of reviewing this. But I sort of had this opinion, and, and you can argue with this or not. I don't think any company has ever fall. I, I believe in documentation, but I don't think any but any company has ever fallen, has ever been breached because they didn't have documentation, uh, 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 effective documentation, or the mm. do or the stuff wasn't written <laughs> right, down. Right, right, right. So yeah. I always gave a lot of leeway. I was much more interested in okay, let's look at the systems. Let look, let's look at what you're actually doing, which is the other half of the PCI yep. standard. Is okay, you say you're doing this. 
let's let's look at systems and see if you're actually okay. doing yeah. it. Dude, well, your that documentation is fucking fantastic, but you haven't implemented a piece of it. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. and that's a well, lot that, of the function of audit and operational security yeah. that Joff talked about too. So well, we, we we're, get we're into running that. a, a um, little we, short on time. I hate to cut you short, oh, okay. Joff, ahead, but uh, we'll be uh, doing a show next week. It'll be our last show of, of the year. year. And I'm going to miss it. Oh, you won't be here? We're CDI oh. next week. Oh, CDI is I'll next week. I'll be here. About dialing in. Yeah, Joff will be here, so that's great. Um, J- Jeff, I don't think you're scheduled to be I here next week. Here. Wait, Joff will be in studio next week? <laughs> Joff threatens to be <laughs> <Again>? in studio. <laughs> I'm going to be in Nashville getting ready for my uh, my uh, speaking engagement. Tenable is oh, that's sponsoring right. a, uh, the one Star of the Wars premieres thing. of the yeah. Star Wars movie, and I'm giving a talk beforehand entitled... Oh. The Art of the Jedi Mind why Trick. D- why didn't I get invited? Oh, that's I've, awesome. I've got the Jedi costume. I got the boots today. The the the, the tunic and robe that's are supposed awesome. to be there by tomorrow. So oh, I I, I, I've Jedi given up garb. on watching any more Star Wars trailers. I'm trying to <laughs> be optimistic about it. I'm trying to forget that J.J. Abrams did Star Trek. It's going to be fine. <laughs> It'll be fine. Yeah, it's yeah, going to be fine, keep, right? Keep on that path. Robert, <laughs> Robert Graham from Eratosec wrote the blog post to kind of, it set my expectations much lower, which I think was important. To, you, it is you know, squelch my <laughs> expectations. It is going to be a yeah, great Yeah, so story. you will be surprised in the end. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it is going to I'm be a, a Trekkie. Story. There's so much more philosophy and theology in Star Trek than Absolutely. Star Wars ever. I agree. Star, I agree. War, Star Wars, Star Wars is, is more political. Pretty, pretty simple I would call it line. opera more, not <laughs> theology. <laughs> it's a space opera. Yeah, well, I, more so I, than I, it is theology and in, in addressing yeah. a lot more of the social I, I'm issues. With, I'm with Jeff on this one, too. I'm a, I'm a Trekkie. Um, uh, the, the only time Trek really totally disappointed me is when we went down the uh, – the Voyager path, Voyager, which was yeah. Gilligan's Island in space. Wow. See, my um, wife loves see, Voyager. Loves it was, um, what's the one where they're on the space station and that the, they don't Deep move. Space Nine. Deep Space, oh, Nine. Nine. Deep space Nine. Nine was an atrocity. Yeah. But yeah, I, that was I am actually anyway. old enough that I used to watch the original Star Trek episodes when they originally yeah, aired. Yeah, so did my mom. In, yep. On <laughs> black and... On <laughs> No, I mute. say that jokingly, no but mute, literally, Paul. but no mute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I say that jokingly, but was literally, years she did later watch when I was watching reruns when I first saw it in color, and I'm like, whoa, they've got different uniforms. They got oh different my god, colors. Oh, but no, is no, black. No. Holy what shit! Year, yeah. What year should <laughs> what year should they air originally? Sixty-six Six, through sixty-eight. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it was Friday yeah. night. Yeah, more to the so point, watch. Kirk always got his woman. That's right. So I saw I saw the reruns. I saw the reruns when I was a kid. Oh, I did too. I watched the Star Trek reruns uh, of the original series. So I'm thinking in my talk about the art of the Jedi mind trick, since I'm not allowed to do Star Wars because it's all copyrighted and everything, I'm going to talk a lot about Star Trek, I think. Yeah, why not? And uh, let let the chips fall. December 18th is going to be interesting. Uh, We're going to one of the first showings on December 18th um, because it's the prudent thing to do. Uh, You know, Star Wars came out the year I was born, the first Star Wars. Uh, oh, my so, God. You're yeah, so young. Just to <laughs> put that out there. Right, I was uh, three, and I saw it in the theater when I was three years old. So first I, I, I saw, well, I saw Star Wars originally in the theaters back in the days when the theaters only had one screen. Mm-hmm. Yep. And when Empire Strikes Back came out, I stood in line for two hours waiting to go in. Mm-hmm. And if you're going to be in Nashville to hear my talk, this is a spoiler. But I, I stood in line with a bunch of friends, two hours waiting for the previous show to let out. We're standing there, all the anticipation, mm-hmm. you know, this is the sequel to Star Wars. And we're finally getting let in. The previous show lets out. And some people walk by and say, somebody says as they're walking by us, I can't believe Darth Vader's his father. Oh, oh no. no. It's like one of the greatest movie reveals in history. The ultimate spoiler. Oh, it is the ultimate no. spoiler. No. <laughs> so that's, that's what a great the, note that's, to end the show on. And on that, I we know. end the show. All if right. You, well, Larry, you, yes. take us out. Over. And. <laughs> <laughs> Out. <laughs> no. Someone posted on Facebook a a view from space of the moon in in front of Earth and That's had no 